It's, it's good to be it's here. Good, right? It's good, right? It's good to be hey, here. Hey, Steve, can I be honest with you, bro? You're the guy that fucks my wife, and I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Nye is just swearing up a storm. What do you mean by that? He, he dropped this video that said... Saying is the planet's on fucking fire. Whoa. There are a lot of things we could do. Like, imagine that, bro. Bill Nye. One, others have called him, people of the past have called him Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah. And now he's turned into some sort of Howard Stern reject. Hey, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast incredible. in the world. Bill Nye, if you're watching, we love you, dude. We fuck with you, we, Bill I Nye. I actually fucking love you. We fucking you. love you, Bill We'd Nye. We'd love to have you on the show. Woo. Bill, get out here. Bill, 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 Bill not a science guy. guy. Hit that subscribe button. button. We freaking oh. love you guys. Thank you for listening to us. This podcast is great. It's great to do, but also mainly just do it. True. And great. If you're great. listening to the audio only version, you're that's early. great. Because we do an extended. Can you shut the fuck well, just, up, bro? Because you're okay, kind of yeah. just chiming in when I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, got, you got a new wardrobe and now you're acting all cocky. Okay, okay. You got a Yeezy okay. shirt. Hold on, I'm going to turn around. Walk in here, bro. Okay. I'm gonna get Jeez. the I'm gonna get today's guest to beat your ass, dude. Fuck. Hey, but before we <laughs> before we bring him on, um, I just want to talk about some things. Uh, don't 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 confuse me for Jake. Don't do that. <laughs> it's done. It's over. We we don't even look alike. I'm three inches taller. What if you're in a foreign country? No, bro. And it's like no, like you know? we look so different. I don't understand. Like I would never confuse Chris Hemsworth for Liam Hemsworth. What am I seven? What it, well, what's what the problem about, here? Well, here's one of the issues. I think it might be a lot of the people that come up to you and say, oh my God, Logan, you say, I'm not Logan, I'm Jake. So what if you told so many people yeah. that, that you started to manifest really yourself into you your little brother? Uh-huh. Yeah, you spread a false, false lies. Narratives. False, false rumors, bro. His hair is still going up though, dude. And mine falls Flip, down and kind of, it's, it's a little wave. My dog's a real life dildo. Which one? Oh, the new. Broly. Really? Is yeah, he, the husky. Yeah. The husky. He. I just realized. I think he has a mu- some sort of muscle deficiency problem. He suffered some some sort of some like sort a of dildo atrophy. has a muscle a- deficiency no, problem. Just like a dildo, so floppy. <laughs> Flo- oh, this dog is okay. floppy, bro. Yeah. His paws just go blah, 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 and like yeah. he just his ear, like everything about him is dildo. Like at dude. first, I I thought it was his youth and the fact that he's a puppy, and now I'm worried. Now it's just it. now it's just a big fake know, cock. Some dildos, you know? some dildos are firm though. <laughs> Not one of those kind. Not no. the like. Have you ones, seen, have you ever seen him jump up on something? Yeah. And by the way, his back legs never make it; just his front. Yeah. And then he c- crawls up there. Like, what dog is doing that? Is he a dog or Alex Honnold from Free Solo? Just crawling around up everything. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a dildo. He looks like if like a jar of peanut butter was like had legs, bro. He's yeah. just like a blob of just nothing. Hey, speaking bro. of peanut not, butter, not filled. Are we going to uh to Vegas this weekend? EDC. EDC. We've been cordially invited by the powers that be, just like every other event. But the difference here is that Jake Paul and Tana are gone. And like, oh! let me tell you, where the power couple goes, the followers will follow. Bro, yeah. have you guys? Did you guys talk about this when I was gone? Like, what? I'm curious, Logan. Uh, what are your thoughts on on the uh, Jake and Tana? Yeah. Dude, for those of you who don't know, Jake is my brother. Is dating. Some, uh, not some, an internet person. Why'd you, why'd you we, hit the quotes? Because like, bro, I don't know how What's real her last name again? Is. I don't know. Oh, my, 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 I don't know how real it is, dog. And I'm just like, and by the way, we love Tana. I love her. She sat in that seat before. Um, I just, I don't know. You don't know if it's real? That's what <laughs> yeah, you, and I'm that's his brother. And I, I don't know if I can get behind a relationship just for clout. I don't think I can. Have because, you talked to him? Is that what he says it's, it's for? Well, they like fucking stuff. Yeah. So, so, it's, it's, so is there... Like I, before she left at that party, the Fashion Nova party, before she left, because they did not leave together, she goes, Jake, I want you to fuck nine bitches tonight. And I go, what did you just say? She's like, yeah, like, I don't care as long as he's happy. And I'm like, this is great. Yeah. I'm okay. so happy for my brother. My girlfriend didn't allow that. Granted, I don't even want that because of how great she was. <laughs> But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's yeah. such a weird situation. Now Jake has been going back and forth with uh, <clears throat> Bieber on a whole bunch of shit. Dude. Oh, oh, Jake might box Tana's ex-boyfriend. Yo, what's the name? What's the guy's name? Justin. 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 Sue. Justin. Bieber. Justin. Listen, bro. What Brad are you the- out of your godforsaken? 
What's going on? What with a you, box, kid? Jake? Just take the L. By you the good? way, are you good, bro? It's done, bro. By you, the way, you lose. You got a bunch of hundred thousands of followers out of it. Find another fucking take, chick, bro. Take those dubs and There's get chicks out. everywhere. Cash out, dog. Eat some Hit burritos. The coin star and bounce. Eat some burritos right in the halfway point. All right, dude. You, you, you. Ran, you. you ran an Iron Man, which we did not talk about in the last podcast. Yeah, we didn't do. Dude. Let's just let's just talk about that real quick, bro. Yeah, I did. You have five seconds. Iron Man two. I uh, swam, I biked, and I ran. And I asked for advice before it, and you told me, "Hey, man, I want you to swim, I want you to bike, and I want you to run." And that was the sole reason why I did those three things That's, in that exact order. Shit. Seems like sound advice. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't wrong. wrong. Advice. Did you uh, accomplish your goals? I, you know, I didn't quite get my goal. Which was kind of disappointing. You were kind of way off, dude. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You were 45 minutes too late. This is the thing. You're a pussy. I am. I am. No. I wish I could say, no, nah, bro. Nah, <laughs> no, nope. no, nah. Nah. I'm not going to let you have this one. You know why? <laughs> Should I do it now? You, bro, I see every day. I see you doing this wow. in, the, in the backyard. Oh, yeah. And the stationary bike never goes it's, anywhere. It's, it's just weird for shit. nine hours. This just doesn't go anywhere. Is that All what we're getting what, at? for what, Spence? To shave an hour off your last time? An hour and 11 minutes, dog. That's, That's pretty sad. ass, bro. Yeah, well, let's see you do an Iron Man, bitch. No, oh. no, 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 no. You never oh, will, bro. Fast, fast. No, no, and Text here's why you never bitch. will, bro. Because I don't got time for that. How long does it take? I don't. How long does it take? Without the... Uh, 11... <laughs> I did it in 11 hours, 46 minutes. Do you know what he does in a hour, 11 minutes? Uh... He consumes content. Consumes shit content. Masturbates. Plays with Broly. Doesn't jerk off. He okay. brings in fucking talent for that. Okay. <laughs> so he doesn't actually jerk off. He usually showers. I say usually. I use that sparingly because it's not always. Not and Sundays. what's the other thing that you do? Mainly just be. All in those just 11 be. hours. So imagine him biking, running, and fucking. I couldn't do it. The other yeah. thing. Well, okay. So. Couldn't happen. I went to China. I went, I, we did a lot of stuff over the last six months and I missed some heavy training blocks. So I learned like how crucial, like you got to stick to the exact plan. Hey, be honest. Are it. you proud of him, Angel? Angel's his girlfriend. You are. She that is something that you have to have endurance for. It's kind of the question is like, how does other things in life? Like what? Like what, Angel? What other things like does what you do with things? endurance? <laughs> <laughs> no, Angel, you tell us, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, thought you were going somewhere right, else. Listen, with dude. That. All jokes aside, I am proud of you. Iron Man's extremely hard. Just next time, you're going sub ten. All right, you're going sub ten. No, 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 no. No, next time I'm going to Kona. Oh, I'm going shit. nine hours. Let's go. Yeah, I'm not going to do another one until I go for Kona. Let's go, Spencer. I've, I've made that decision. All right, bro. We, we can be as athletic as we want, but we're. A typo. There's a typo on the intro. My producer's telling me now. He's looking at me. In the eyes. Is it mu is it muddle and <laughs> muscle and fitness? Don't, don't, if you don't move, don't. he can't see you. What? What was it? What was the typo? Want to say it's it right here? Right here? Not right here. What? It's fitness. <laughs> I spotted I it with my third wait, eye. I would have caught that. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to read it just like you typed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're talking about athletics. The guest is more athletic than anyone ever in studio today. It's a Super Bowl champion with the New York Football. Team Giants. <laughs> he was named the NFL's fittest man by, here it is, Dylan, muscle and fittest, <laughs> which he graced the cover of. And when he's not getting kicked out of gyms for going too hard, he's a successful motivational and fitness personality. It's Steve Weatherford. <laughs> Big dog. Woo. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Hey, yo. Oh. Hey, you're huge. It is good to be here. Yo, thanks for coming, hey, thank man. thank you for those sound effects. I am a dog. Let's go. <laughs> hey, I was a little <clears throat> leery with the uh, beginning of the show to dildo dogs and all that other stuff. But now that we're settled in, I'm actually hearing some real dogs in my audios. It's, it's good to be it's here. Good, right? It's good, right? It's good to be hey, here. Hey, Steve, can I be honest with you, bro? You're the guy that fucks my wife, and I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fucking guy. Woo! <laughs> Guy. Good God, <laughs> bro, what's going on, dude? That was like the shining. Fuck. That was the shining moment. I had the goal to be on that cover. Real talk, you guys. I listened to the podcast you guys did with uh, with Charlie Rocket. Best Loved it, dude. Oh, He's incredible. a good Instagram follower. So if you're not following, following him, yep. incredible. But that was like the quantum possibilities that he talked about. Like I wrote that down when I was 14 years old. Oh so it's like God, it's funny yeah. for us to like giggle about it now. And like I was kind of like 
offset talking about like insecurities and why I look yeah. like I look. But dude, when I was 14 years old, I was 108 pounds. So I was always like super fascinated and really, really driven to become a pro athlete at 14 years old. But like looking in the mirror, like you're like, dude, uh, is this a, a real <laughs> yeah, dream? Yeah. You know what I mean? But like every single person has to, to start somewhere. And like, that's why like for me to come in here and have conversations with you guys, like about real stuff. Yeah. And an obsession, because that's one thing that like all of us in this room and usually the people that come to this property, like you guys don't get enough credit for your obsession for things, because there was no guarantee when you started out on the journey that you're on. It was cool to listen to the podcast you did with yeah. your mom. And I'm sitting here and, and listen to some of the answers that, that she has, knowing that she's been here for the whole journey of inception to where you guys are at right yep. now. And it's just really, it's powerful to be around people that funnel obsession into powerful things, because I know you had periods of your life where your obsession opposite direction, right. But it was still an obsession. So yeah, like yeah. people are, are born with, with drive and ambition. And I truly, truly believe that. I mean, anybody can go out and, and find it or create it, but I believe that people are born with a powerful desire or ambition. And I feel like that is what your gift is. Like you're super creative and everything, yeah. but it's, it's your ability to take something that you're obsessed with. And, and sometimes you're choking it, but you're nurturing it and you're constantly sharpening your tool yep, yep, yep. to the point where you, you build an empire that has so much influence on people that it's, 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 it's awesome to be around people like that because that is, is what I am. And that's what, you know, that's my mission right now. That's why I, walked away from football and it's funny to giggle at these magazines. But when I look at them, I think about <sighs> when I was 14. That's crazy. Success yeah. breeds success, man. The more you're around that type of person, but who, who were you around that made you great? That made this type of thing possible? Or was that a self-obtained goal? No, I mean, it's just like, dude, you guys lift weights, man. And we were talking, Spencer was talking about, by the way, I did my first half marathon about, I don't know, probably two months ago. And I'm not a runner at all. I did it at 256 pounds. My goal was to do it at 250 because I didn't want to lose weight Christ. to do it. Fucking so I did it at 246 and I only prepped for six weeks. And I'm not saying this to like brag, but it just, it, it, it was just a reminder because I hate running. And when I picked that as a goal, it was really because one of my buddies was that I lift with in the morning always says, well, you can't do anything with it. Like you're just strong. You can't run like I run because he runs. Ah. So I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll do any race you want to do and I'll beat you in it. Uh, long story short, I beat him by like 45 minutes, but Damn. I trained, I trained so freaking hard. When I say obsessed for five and a half weeks, like I'm just grinding on how far, this. How far are you running every day? Um, my, my run plan was, was five and a half weeks and, and it would go like a six miler, a three miler, a five miler, a day off, a 10 miler, Damn. an eight miler, a two miler, a day off. So it was a lot of running and I didn't, and I didn't, uh, neglect any of my weightlifting, so it's just like, I, dude, I'm waking up at four o'clock every every morning just so I can get my work in wow. and still do my business, spend time with my wife, spend time with my five kids. You know what I mean? But I don't want the vision that I have for my life to be slowed, slowed down by anything that I can control. So it's just about applying that obsession to things that you want to build. And it's just, it's, it's fun to be around people that are hungry and constantly always desiring to, to be better and to do better. How much you weigh now? And how tall Two, are you? Probably 240 right yeah. now. You're bigger than I thought you'd be. Yeah, Everyone real talk. says that. Big boy. Says yeah. that. But I'm boy. still a pussy. I, I, need you to, I need to remember that. Hey, by I, the way, I really quick. You, I need you to remember the same, dude. I give a heck of a hug, though. <laughs> I'm going to Pam. I'm going to call him out on it right now. The self-deprecation <laughs> shit. So she call, she brought this to my attention today. I guess a lot of times, and you you probably notice it more than I do, do, he either is calling himself a trick asshole, a pussy, a bitch. What are some of the other things he says? A washed up, controversial, whatever, right? Pam said to me this morning, she said, I've noticed Logan has gotten into this even joking sense of self-deprecation. I don't know where it came from. And I started to think about it. Why are you a trick asshole? And why are you a bitch? And why are you a pussy? Yo, that's all what, jokes. Hey, no, because that's what people want to hear, bro. Like, am I, eh, realistically, am I going to sit here and tell you like, I'm the fucking shit. No. What about like in no, between? Say that. Could you find like a happy balance? Like, <laughs> nah, I'm just, I'm, a nah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm a trick average. Asshole. And also like, I'm, like, I'm really good at filing also, bro, like, taxes and I, expense I, reports. <laughs> <laughs> Because your mom, because your mom said, and I quote her here, she said she thinks one of the reasons that you've become such a bitch is because you say it so much. <laughs> He's manifesting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you, speaking it into existence. You said that, mom. Mike, now you're really in trouble. <laughs> hey, Steve, has your mom ever told you you're a bitch? 
No, oh, man. My mom, my mom loves nice. Jesus, and I feel like she loves me almost that much. But Pam, I will tell you this. You should be really proud. Oh, my God. You really should be proud. Oh, she's proud. He does, he does a lot of great things, and he's handled adversity. And I mean this like a real pro. Because I'm not like huge, huge into YouTube. Although I do follow people that have influence, and I thought he really handled that like a pro. Hey, appreciate real you, talk. bro. Yeah. Appreciate you for real. That 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 means a lot coming from you, because um, you've done a lot of shit yourself, dude. And, yeah, and, I mean, I had to navigate New York media. Now, granted, like, <laughs> like let's 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 talk about the like the totem pole, okay, of of NFL athletes, and like, where are you at on the pecking order? Like, I'm barely like an inch or two above the janitor. You know, like you're a punter. Yeah. I don't even score points. So like I don't really need to like self-deprecate myself that much because I'm already like pretty low on the totem pole. But at the end of the day, like somehow my name always still ends up on like the VIP list. Like it's at the bottom. And I don't know if it's because my last name starts with a W or that's just where I belong. But I, I I've always been super fortunate and blessed with with opportunities. And the majority of the time when I take a swing at them, I'm contacting because I'm putting myself in good situations by surrounding myself with hungry people that that really want to do like of substance in the world. It doesn't benefit you, Mike, to talk about your battles with with drugs and addictions, but it benefits other someone people. else. Yeah, it benefits other people. And that's it why it's be, like this it, is so powerful. Yeah, it can be slightly cathartic at first because you're getting stuff, you're you're dealing with demons and traumas that you never have before. But, but in it's the, helpful after to talk about it. Yeah, man. but after you've said the story so many times, you start to realize the effect it has on other people, and mm -hmm. that is so cathartic. Right. It's incredible. I, yeah. I I cannot believe you were a punter, bro. Like, look, what punters <laughs> climbing? Bro? Like, this is crazy. And even your captions are like a list influencer caption. Once you lick the lollipop of mediocrity, <laughs> you'll suck it for life. Like the average punter is like a, it's like a tooth, literally a toothpick. Yeah, but I think like we we talked about it earlier and giggled about it. But I think honestly, like still, I still have the insecurity of like when I was that little boy. Really, you know what I mean? And so even now, like I don't need to look like I I look right now. Like I, you know, yes, I I I make money um, creating programs and and supplements, and I I love what I do, and I help people change their body. And in the process is like people come to you for like bigger arms and better abs, but what they end up getting is self-confidence from actually starting and finishing a program and the bigger arms or the better abs are just, Side yeah. yeah, because I think the, the, the real problem with, with people pursuing and finding what it is that they're obsessed with is they just get overwhelmed on like where to start. So doing all the fitness business and helping people do that is awesome. But now I'm in a season of my life and I'm starting to evolve just like you guys have constantly been evolving and reinventing yourself is I've only been giving people 20% of what I truly think that they they need or they want that they don't even know that they want. So I've been giving them 20% of it, the arms and the abs and the nutrition and the motivation. But what about the 80 other, the, the other 80%, which has to You can buy it do, now on steveweatherford.com. No, I'm not even selling anything. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> just like, I like, that's what I'm motivated to do, regardless if that's, you know what I mean? Like websites or Instagrams or going and speaking, regardless if it's third, you know, third graders or, you know, a room full of CEOs. Like I, I love to do that more than I ever loved playing football. And and so that's kind of like where I'm at in life. And it's it's a very unique place to be because I've gone through all of the things, Mike, that you've gone through with drug addiction yeah, I read, and just I, obsessive. I read some of that. So what was so what was your what was your uh situation and your scenario? How did that all come to um be? pretty typical? I I'm assuming for most people that have ever dealt with anything like that, it's injury. You know, doctor gives you what you need, and as soon as you don't need it anymore, you just want it. And so my my addiction and my my real problem started with with drugs towards the tail end of my career after an injury. And then I, I just took it because I wanted it. And the reason that I wanted it was kind of goes back to like us giggling Obsession. about that 14 year old yeah. kid yep. is like I still viewed myself as that skinny kid and I didn't have the self-confidence. I, I, I had confidence in my ability as an athlete, but I didn't have confidence in my self-worth. I only thought my my value to the world or my value to my parents, my value to people was me winning or losing. And so winning like games weren't games to me when I was a little boy, because I discovered at like five years old, like I'm different than other kids. I have like extreme ADHD and I wasn't a bad kid, but I always got in trouble. 
But now I'm discovering like as an adult, having extreme ADHD makes you like super uh, creative yep, and, yep, and, it's, and it's super helpful. And, and, you know, I'm sure this room is, is filled with that, but that's why it's fun to connect with the, with people that are using what some people regard as a learning disability, what it's like, it's the greatest gift ever. It's just, a it's equipping people and equipping kids with the ability to manage their gift when they see it as a curse at that age. Did you, did you have young uh, like bullies or people around you, or was this like just kind of like a product of the system? I think it was not like allowing you to flourish. No, I don't think it was anything outside of myself. I think it was, I think honestly, I think it had a whole lot more to do with like every little boy's dream as like making their dad proud, you know? So was, I thought the way that I would make my dad proud because I only valued myself when I was competing. Cause when I was in school, I was always in trouble, but when I was running track or playing basketball, or playing soccer, I never played football until high school. Like that's the only time people like clapped for me or, or, or celebrated me. And so I was like, well, this is my worth then let me get really, really good at this. And so I took that obsession and put it into sports. And then when I was 14, I put it into the weight room and it opened up a world of possibilities to me. And, and, dude, life was, was hard. You know what I mean? Like it's hard when, if you win, you give the credit to the rest of your teammates. And then when you lose, you take extreme ownership of that. And that's what really drove me to drugs because I always wanted to win. And now as an adult, I'm starting to figure it out. Really the reason I was driven with ambition and drive had a lot to do with seeking my dad's approval. You know what I mean? Now I'm 36 years old and I'm a father and I'm getting an opportunity to speak to other fathers in addition to, you know what, dude, my son is 11. You know, I've got 11, nine, six, three, and one. Like this house is crazy. Wow, Dude, come to my house. It's a petting zoo. You know what I mean? What's the boys girls ratio? I have one boy, four girls. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Where does, is he in the middle or is he the oldest? He's the oldest. So he, oh, that's awesome. I pulled him out. Oh, that's awesome. Big bro. He got confetti on his head. Like he was old enough to like, Dad, we we did it. We won the Super Bowl, and that was forty seven miles from my hometown. That's awesome, Nuts. Dude. So it's just like those are the the things that like so many people struggle with is depression and anxiety, and they they look straight to drugs to fix it for them because that's what's prescribed for people. Have you have you started to talk to um, your son about any of this yet? I we we've been I've been looking up stats the past week, and I think we we kind of. Um, glimmer over this topic. I've never gone super into depth on, on what my addiction was like living on people's floors for years at a time and just, just having the worst possible time. But this is not a story about me. This is the biggest crisis in the United States right now. I just read a stat that more Americans have died between 2007 and 2017 than both the world war two and Vietnam combined. Yeah, More crazy. Americans from drug addiction. It has depressed the life expectancy in this country for three years in a row. The average life expectancy continues to drop all as a result of overdose victims. And in cities like where Logan's from and in that belt between Ohio and West Virginia, they're bringing refrigerated trucks to the hospital every day because they can't fit all the bodies in the morgues. And so they've got to park these refrigerated trucks outside the morgues to fill with the overdose victims. Um what Dude, do you, real, how a, do you, how problem. do you talk to your kids about something like that? I mean, I, I, I feel extremely, um, pressured and I'm saddened by the amount of work I've done on it so far. I bring it up on the show a lot, but this is not the platform for it. And I don't want to talk about something that much, but it's a topic that's not being discussed. How are you discussing your problem and your, and what you almost you know, it almost probably was your demise. Like me, I was ready to go on the ground. For sure. How do you talk about that with your kids? Um, or have you not? Kind yet? of like my, my, my journey, like my journey through that has been really podcasting it, you know, like as weird as it sounds like, yeah, I've done the therapy and all the other stuff. And, um, you know, I've been, I've always been into like personal development and, and leadership accountability. Um, but to have the conversation with my son, uh, it's not very difficult because I can speak to him. Not like, you know, I haven't done it. Like, dude, I've done everything. I've done it every which way. Like this is not, this is not ever going to lead any other place. Like if you ever have any problems with it, dude, talk to me. Cause my dad or my son 
I've been full on honest with everything. I mean, he's 11, so I can have that conversation with him. And it ha- was, hasn't been until, until recently, but I think creating a relationship with my son where he, he knows I'm not going to judge him. I'm going to create a space for him to have that conversation with me So important because that connection is, is really like what I wanted with my dad and so many people in our generation, our age didn't get that from their dad. And so it really, dude, it, it will spin you in a different direction if you don't surround yourself with the right types of people. Do you think it's counterproductive for parents to like tell their kids like, yo, if you drink, like I'm going to kill you. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, because that's the first thing that I would have done. And that's what I did. Like my parents never had sex before they married. They got married. They never smoked a cigarette. And my older brother was an angel. My little sister was an angel. My little brother was an angel. And then there was me. You know what I mean? And I was always the black sheep because I was always like challenging authority. (laughs) But it's benefited me in like my relentless pursuit of what I want. As long as it's something good, I'm going to win. You know what I mean? And so that's like kind of like what I was talking to Logan about being obsessed. Like, when did you come completely obsessed with with creating content? Not just like YouTube, just creating content and captivating people and entertaining people. Uh, when I was six. Right. Bro, I knew it was, was going to be early. Man. Yeah. When right. I was I was writing uh, novels when I was six years old. My teacher would. So I would I would uh, write them in my journal because I didn't know how to type. And my teacher would type them up and laminate them and put them in a, in a little like a uh, binder for me. And uh, I wanted to be an author when, from about five to eight. And then I discovered, um, and the, the digital camera was becoming popular. Saved up money through a couple of birthday parties, bought my first digital camera, took pictures of flowers, and then eventually evolved into a video camera, started filming football games, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Computer. started uploading on YouTube. Yeah. So it was photography first. And then yeah. at what point, um, in your mind, did you think it would be a good part, good idea to put your yourself into that content? Um, we didn't have a choice, dude. Like I was, <laughs> I was ten, you know. So who else is gonna? Like, no, but I'm saying, like, when you have the camera, you said you were taking pictures of like flowers oh, and stuff. Oh. At what point did you start creating content uh, with yourself? The video, the video when we got the video camera. Okay, it was because I had a little brother, Jake, and it was like, okay, I'll I'll hold it now, and you do the funny thing, and then we could just switch, and then it would be funny. And eventually our, our, we forced our friends to do it. Shout out Mac, my friend Mac, who's uh, actually going to Russia with us. Yep. Um, big, big reason why we created so much content because he was always down to, he didn't want to be in front of the camera. He was down to just film. Right. You know, and we would make him sometimes and he'd do it. But uh, yeah, man, it was, it was, we noticed it at a very early age. I wanted to um, hit on something though, when you were talking about growing up, uh, it sounds like the the feeling that you had when you were that skinny 14 year old kid using your words. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, has scarred you in a good way. Like it's definitely, uh, it's result. It's yielded like that. Insecurity has yielded like yes. what people would view as like greatness, I guess, you so, know, being on magazines and stuff. So mm-hmm. why I'm curious is like, um, you said I, I was bigger than you expected, bro. When I was 14, I was also the, they call me shrimp. I was the last one to go through puberty. I was the smallest one in my group. I was fast as fuck, super athletic, but I was tiny and skinny. Right. And, um, I remember being insecure. I remember taking the long way to get into the freshman locker room. So the seniors didn't give me the freshman beat down. Right. Um, But that feeling went away when I got older and got muscles and I've completely forgotten about it. Cause I've, I'm like, this is, this is the, this is me. Right. I've grown into this. Right. So I, I'm just. So you feel like you are what you look like right now. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think I haven't always, gotten there yet, man. I'm still yeah. late. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. Seriously. I That's mean, like, crazy. Th- like, um, like random examples of like why drugs were like my choice is because I never felt like I was enough. You know what I mean? So like, you know, dude, I'm but a, where do you think that comes from? That wasn't from your dad. Maybe not giving you the encouragement I, you needed. When I don't you think it was up? encouragement. I think it was just like, like my dad looking at me and be like, man, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Like my dad told me he loved me and his actions reflected that. But there, I, there was something about like my dad telling me like he's proud of me because during my whole NFL career, like it wasn't just sports because my dad's, you know, hardcore Christian as, as am I. And, and, you know, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to say hardcore. Dude. I'll, I'll recant that. I do my best. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting yeah. here talking about dildos and cocaine and listen, I've lived that, I've lived that life. And so anyway, to, to get back onto the topic, my dad has always been very philanthropic and you know, he's never had a ton of money. We grew up in Terre Haute, Indiana. 
Um, he's always provided for his family, but we didn't have much. But what he had, he gave away all the time, like his time or his finances. And so I had the idea. I'm like, dude, I've already won a Super Bowl. Like, I, I, I'm still getting this. And like, and this is happening subconsciously, I'm sure, because it was at that point. I'm like, I'm going to become the most philanthropic guy in the National Football League because I know my dad will love that. You know, like I've always wow. been good at sports and I've never gotten it, but I won a Super Bowl. I didn't get it. Now what else do I need to do? So I'm like trying to jump through these hoops of trying to get my dad's validation and I'm like running ragged, man. You know, like I'm I'm trying to do everything I can. You don't take this the wrong way, but why you give a fuck, bro? Yeah, dude, why do all little boys really care that much? I, well, you're not a little boy it's, anymore. It's, it's funny when- I mean, obviously, so like, but like- It's, it's funny when he says that though. I, I want to drop this in really quick. I When you say that, and I, I haven't thought about this since I was a fucking kid, probably. Still to this day, I don't know that there's a better feeling in my life than having my dad say- I'm really proud of you for what you did here. Yeah, like the hands down, one of the most important moments of your life as a kid, and still to this day, to this day, literally, when I get on the phone with him, he says, "Hey, I saw what you did in this situation or that situation or this business move or that, and I'm proud of you for that." It's still, I think it's just like an innate thing as a, feel as like a that? boy. Do you dude. feel like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel complete now. Yeah. Um, but after retiring from the NFL and then getting into to being an entrepreneur and a public speaker and doing TV and, you know, ESPN and have my own show and all this stuff, I was I still didn't get it. And so it, it drove me like dark, man, like super dark. And it wasn't like I didn't know that that's what it took. I just remember like winning the Super Bowl 47 miles from my hometown, like the confetti's coming down. My mom's crying. My grandma's there. I'm holding my son. Al Roker is interviewing me like. You know, they said at halftime, granted, remember where I'm at on the totem pole. At halftime, Al Michael said, if we're voting for Dylan knows, he's a Giants fan. <laughs> if we're voting for an MVP at halftime, I've never said this, but it would be the punter Steve Weatherford. Woo! So, like in my mind, Damn. thank you. Thank you. Damn. So I'm thinking in my in my mind, like it's never gonna get better than this because I've got all these people telling me how great I am, right? I go to the I go to the Super Bowl. Post like the post Super Bowl party, private, just the team. Kenny Chesney's up there playing for like a crowd of like 150 people. Wow. My mom's there. Everybody's there that I love, that I care about. We're all celebrating. My family doesn't really drink, so I'm having a drink. And I always told my wife, I'm like, babe, if I ever win a Super Bowl, I'm gonna get so loaded. I'm gonna piss the <laughs> yeah. bed. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I remember drinking <clears throat> that first. He's a dog. <laughs> and I remember finishing my first beer. My wife never encourages me to drink because I was, you've never had a larger savage on. And I'm not talking about physically. You've never, yeah. ha you've never had somebody that went harder in college than what I went in college. Really? Like, dude. Yeah. Google me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, where'd you go to school? University of Illinois. Okay. So that's where like Greek life and fraternity yeah, yeah. started. Okay. So, yeah. so, so what happened? You, you drank the beer. So I drank the beer and, and, Thank you for bringing me back on track. He's good. Oh, he's great. He's, I, he's I host a show. It's yep. called Impulsive. The <laughs> number one podcast in the world. So my wife never encourages me to have more. And she's like, do you want me to get you another drink? Because she knew I made that declaration. I'm yeah. pissing the bed tonight. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and she said, you want me to get... And I remember looking at her and thinking to myself, like, I just felt like I was just getting hugged on the inside. I was so happy. I was like, I don't want to feel any different. You know, and so I had like another 30 minutes with my family. They were, we shut the thing down at like 2.30. And in the NFL, you can't have women in your in your room. It doesn't matter if you won the Super Bowl because if somebody gets raped or whatever. So anyway, my wife couldn't sleep with me in my hotel room that night. Wait, after what? the, sorry. I'm sorry. After uh, the Super Bowl. After the Super Bowl. What are you I could have right gone back to her hotel room. But it's just, it's an just, NFL just, policy. Yeah, no. you can't get on the room. Like security guards. Like Why did you sleep? Not with your wife. I was exhausted, dude. I know and that it's just feeling. like my yep. kids are yep, there, yep, yep, dude. Yep. I'm not going to smack hams tonight. Let's okay. be real. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? You're right. I'm that tired. happened after I'm my gonna fight. I'm going to go to bed yeah. a champion. Yeah. 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 See? I thought I thought for sure. I go, I'm going to get fucking shit face and I'm fucking all night. Right. Nope. Nope. Hit the sack. Good. Didn't Gone. take a drink. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Right. Right. Save that for Paris. Ah! <laughs> so I I'm get back to my hotel room. <laughs> Nobody's there. All my teammates are out, you know, just getting it in. And I remember walking into my hotel room in downtown Indianapolis and walking through my hotel up to the glass window and looking down and seeing everybody down there like partying and just, and then I remember taking like a deep breath. And then like, as soon as I exhale, I thought to myself, I'm like, when I'm by myself, like this is the first moment I've been by myself. And I thought to myself, 
I better not piss. I'm saving it for the bed. <laughs> no, I was. I dude only had a beer. I, I, <laughs> oh shit! I, I think to <laughs> myself, like I'm like, this is it. You know what I mean? Like this is like I. I feel like I should feel different. I'm champion of the world. I just set a Super Bowl record. Like I just did something nobody's ever done before, and it was me. Like it was I did it. Like I did it with my team. But I'm, you know, my record. So I'm thinking to myself, like this is it. And it was at that point that I I realized that I was chasing something that was outside of myself. And it was at that point, like I'm giving wow. all of my power away, all of my power for achievement, all of my power for happiness, all of my, you know, my ability for fulfillment, because I'm hanging my happiness or my validation outside of myself. Somebody else controls that, like my dad or, you know, having a million dollars or whatever the case is, like you keep placing that, like, I'll be happy when, and it's, it's the it's backwards, man. It's like, you know what? Decide that you're happy now and continue to improve your life every single day. And don't ever let something or someone outside of yourself be able to control how you feel about yourself. So like, that's the season that I'm in. And I just don't, I don't hear, and I don't see men that are like ultra achieving alphas have these conversations. And so I'm inspired to do something that has crippled me in my life, but I've been able to achieve because of it. So it's a really I know there's a lot of ultra high achievers out there that have achieved greatness through insecurities. And, and I want them to be able to continue to do that, but not have to have like the hate machine of like, I'm not good enough to continue to work the ways required to achieve. If that makes sense. Of course, that's the secret sauce. We've been taught, we've been talking a little bit about that kind of attitude um, lately. And I think that the new breed of business and also lifestyle influencer is going to show a little bit more of the, of the undercarriage of what it takes to be the best or to be good or to achieve and, right. and what failures those include and what tribulations that included and all of the dirty work that went into it. And like Charlie was saying, he, he about his failures, he was talking about, uh, you know, something along the lines of failures telling more of a story than, than successes do, mm-hmm. you know? And so like all these sure. ultra high achievers you talk about that are, you know, on their Lamborghini or, you know, whether it be out here in my garage or whatever, you know, like, I think there's more to the story. There's more impactful parts of the story that don't have those same success notes to it that are more beneficial. Are you finding that through like just being grateful and enjoying the present moment instead of putting so much emphasis on like a end result. No, is that what you're talking about? Or what, I, what's I tried that on for a while. Cause like I said, like I've been like on this journey, like hardcore for, for like two years of really trying to identify what serves me in my life. Like what character traits do I have right now that serve me mm-hmm. and which ones are holding me back. And, and so to your, ask me your complete question because I want to make sure I address it correctly. Is it, is something like when you, when you were in the hotel room looking down, right? Like you realized you got to this moment and it still wasn't giving you what you were looking for. So are you now living a life where you're waking up just grateful every day instead of, no, I still have crap days, man. Of course we all do. But what's, I guess, what's the mentality that you've discovered now that's different from your pursuit no, I get exactly. Yeah, well, and yeah. you know what? I and I actually just had this conversation with with my boy LJ, the 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 guy that really kind of introduced all of us today. Shout out LJ. Shout Appreciate out LJ. That. He's right there. He's the, the man. man. You're the man. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, get, get him nice and tight in the so, face. So I had <laughs> I had a conversation with him about what like when you boil it all down, take all of talent, gift, race, religion, socioeconomic status, like what separates people that start a certain place and end up someplace drastically more great than where they started. And it's the decision making of, of living your life like a pro. And what I mean by, I say that is like, we all have commitments in our life. And what if we, the things that we said that we want to do in our life, regardless if that's, you know, blow up your YouTube or start a, you know, online side hustle business or get married or get in shape what if we viewed all of the things that we want to do in our life as commitments instead of like ideas? Like, well, I wake up in the morning, I'm committed to working out because I know at X amount of time, that's when I have it budgeted into my schedule. So the difference between ultra high achievers and people that maybe have talent and never do anything or people that just don't ever improve their, their life at all during the time that we have on this earth is people that make decisions based upon their commitments not their feelings because it's easy to wake up in the morning 
and be like, man, I don't feel like doing a podcast with this punter that's hey, coming that's up awesome. here Hey, that's awesome. I love that. Stri- you I love I mean? that. Can but, you say that one more time? But you gave me your word like, hey, we're going to do a podcast yeah. today. So you honored your commitment. Yeah. You just did a podcast with your mom before we got on here. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you're pretty fatigued, but you're committed to doing it. And that's the difference between pros and amateurs. So I'll say it again. Pros make decisions based upon commitments. Amateurs make decisions based upon their feelings. I, yo, that is that might be the most important thing you've said thus far. I'm sure yeah. we're going to get a lot more golden nuggets, but that is so cuz I I I a, a image and memory seared into my brain that like always just gets me and I I know when it's happening every time is when it's 8 a.m. and my alarm goes off and I go fuck, I'm so tired. Mm-hmm. I would love another hour, hour and a half. And because I've committed to it's whatever it is, an audition, a workout, um, a vlog, or, or post an X whatever you know, it is, a video like, every single day, you can't, you can't, you gotta honor your commitment and and ignore how you may be feeling. And I think, I think, again, you, you're, you're saying a lot of things, and I'm trying to dissect the stuff that I can apply to my life like forever. Right. And I love that. It's, fu- it's yeah, funny. It's funny. It's funny too because it- I think it's so powerful because it makes decision making like like Mike for guys like you and me or like LJ who have had you know dark struggles that nobody knew about for a long time. It makes this the decision making process and and you know Logan and Spencer. I don't know your history with addictions or things that you know, you take part in that you you know you know don't serve you, but it's like your guilty pressure. Mm-hmm. Making decisions based upon your commitments, based and instead of on your feelings, makes life so much easier because your filtering process is like: Am I committed to doing this? Am I committed to doing this line of cocaine? Am I commit? No, like I'm committed to being sober. I'm committed to this. I'm committed to that. So like. You know, I'm on the road. Let's say I'm playing the 49ers and, you know, the bus doesn't leave for three hours and I'm leaving a team meeting and this smoking hot chick comes up and she's got a friend. I mean, if I'm making a decision, like, let's be real, dude, play that dog sound FX again. (laughs) You can go ahead and do it now, Mike. You can go ahead and do it now, Mike. There you go. I'm a dog and I'm a man. (laughs) Like, if I'm making decisions based upon my feelings, Dude, I'm gonna have a story to tell. Yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> it, it, but I made a commitment to a woman 12 years ago. They're and not breaking. I'm committed to it. You know, so like, take that same level of like. I'm sure you guys imagine when you get married, you're gonna stay faithful to your wife. Like oh, yeah. that's your plan. I don't or think you I am. do it. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I love you, baby. He loves to rock the boat, doesn't I he? I love you. Shake that shit. Hey, I love you, baby. <laughs> This is for my future wife. Like, you can watch this back. I love you. I, I mean it. When did you? But that, but that commitment, what right. if we applied that same level of commitment that to we have to, like, general. our vision of marriage? What if we applied that to, like, getting up at 5 a.m. Or, or 8 a.m. or 10 a.m.? Whatever it is you said you were going to do, like, be a man of your word. And it's so much easier to be a man of integrity and honor and accountability if that's the filtering process of your decision making. And And structured. So like, I think sure. the, I think the word that most people go to when they have this conversation is when you look at people like Zuckerberg jobs, when you, you talk about the highest, yeah. absolute highest level of, of overachievers in this world, they are up at a lot of these guys are up at the same exact time every day. They have let the me change same your, exact. Let me change your language. Yeah, yeah. They're not high achievers. They're, or they're not, uh, what did you call them? Overachievers? Ultra, they're not, yeah, yeah, they're not overachievers because that's well within the realm of possibility because they did it. So they're not overachieving. Ultra achievers, I guess you said. Yeah, well, dude, they're just fulfilling their destiny. Yeah. Like, mom, how great is it for you to sit here and like, look at what your son has created doing something that he loves, impacting people at the level that he does. It's amazing. It's amazing, yeah, right? He's, but he's capable of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so that should make you like ultra proud <laughs> Because he's fulfilling his destiny and he's got a whole lot more in the tank. I have a whole lot more in the tank. Spencer's got more left in the tank. Every single person, Mike, you too. I'm not Thank you. So every because single Logan person would say, watches. Logan would say otherwise. He says, you're 34. You're done. I'm not, well, I mean, not going to forget you. you go to one of them but you know what I mean? Falling out on the floor. What's an overachiever? Overachiever <laughs> based upon somebody else's self-limiting belief that they placed on you. I'm from Terre Haute, Indiana. It's like the meth capital of the world. Like, think about that for a minute. Like, per cap, there's so much drugs there. Over 50% of my high school is on free or reduced lunches. I'm not an overachiever. I'm fulfilling my destiny. So do you think, you know, do you think people who truly fulfill their destiny, like, how important is it to not stop and not settle? Because there's always that that comfortability that sets in at some point, at some point where 
that idea of I made it. Do you have you cut that out of your vocabulary of I've made it or and you're always rising up and taking advantage of, of what you're given. It's a good, Spencer asks good questions. Oh, he's man. incredible at that yeah. question. I just um, wish you would have ran well a faster Ironman. That's the, oh my, like, you're <laughs> right, but like, But damn. you'll get it because you ran an Ironman. Like you, you understand like re- requirement and, and constantly right. pushing yourself <laughs> because you don't know what time you're going to need to do in your training in order to, to beat that goal. Right. You know, so when you were talking, Mike, and you were like, you know, well, people can do this. I think that the first thing for like people that 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 are listening to this are like, okay, cool. I want to make decisions based upon my commitments, not my feelings. You know, screw my feelings, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, where do they start? Like, you got to get clear on what it is you want to do. You want your like, goals. Like for me, one of my goals, and it's stupid, but I want to be able to do the three position splits within eight weeks. So that's like a silly goal that have I have. You started to that LP about I, it. Like I just started. And I know but, you're, you're but, wicked flexible. Yeah, but you're a punter, so don't you already have like a, at least a- Yeah, my right a, leg's wicked flexible. Okay. Like I can get that up over my head, but then I have to do three positions. So it has to be right out, left out, and then- How are you doing the, the middle? Groin, how are you training for the, the middle the one? The groin's tough, man. Bro, tough is an understatement. Yeah. That one's crazy. Can I do it in eight weeks? I'm pretty like- I'm, I've heard I'm you can. Flexible. I've heard you can. Yeah. I think, you know, I talked to you about um, help it, helping Juji me Mufu? come up with- Yes. Juji Mufu. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I you all know this guy? Is he the split But listen, just listen to like- yeah, he is incredible. Juji fucking Mufu. I love this kid. And he's a really, I haven't he's met not him a kid, in person. But <laughs> I have. He, he's he awesome. He seems I, really Oh, genuine. this guy's nuts. He's the one who does the, he does the splits with like with barbells. barbells. Wicked and athletic. I don't know if he can play sports. But he's hilarious. Um, I love his videos. I'm trying to like, fire. He, I feel like this is one of, he wears like horse heads. And does like crazy obstacle courses, and he make he makes like working out fun and lights things on fire. I just want want to say if I did this shit, like YouTube would ban me forever. But yeah. Why? He can't do. I, I can't do anything now. He's anything that's easily line. replicatable. Yeah. yeah uh, that's like where they lighting get shit you. on fire. But yeah, this dude. Uh, so th- you've been talking to him about how to. Uh, the only reason so, it interests yeah. me is because I also. Like he's nuts, bro. Yeah. It's and he's impressive. a huge dude. And he's dude. really powerful. Yeah. So like I'm big and strong, probably not as strong as him, but I'm, I can, st- I still have, you know, probably 37, 38 inch vertical. You know, I can still broad jump, run a 40 really fast. I'm still in really good shape. I feel great. Um, but my point of, of, you know, kind of like declaring my next goal is it's not nearly as hard to achieve goals now than what it was when I was a kid. Cause I wanted to learn how to, to build muscle muscle and fitness was the only place where you could get consumable content for like workouts and stuff like that. So yeah. I would just follow around the biggest guy in the gym. And when he wasn't looking, I would do what he would do. It's just mock. You yeah, know what I mean? Him, yeah. But it, it's never been easier than in the history of the world to get great at something. Mm-hmm. I mean, figure it out what it is that you want to get good at, because I guarantee if you go to social media, there's going to be an expert and he's going to have a plan that you can use. Nobody has excuses. And it's not like, you know, Juju made me like some uh, super special flexibility plan. He sells a program, you know what I mean? And I knew that that was the, the the place to go get it. So if that's my plan and I'm operating based upon my commitments, I'm going to do all of those workouts the way that he instructs me to do it. And I'm going to achieve my goal. And it, then there's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you athletic? I am. Yeah, I was at the Catholic in college too. Okay, so, okay, so I gotta ask, especially like, for what, a white kid. What made you? I mean, dude, he drop he drops balls inside the five yard line, bro. You what did. the hell? What the you hell? I, I, what the so hell I, do you think he I is? I mean, I was gonna ask, like, why are you not a quarterback or a middle linebacker or a fullback? Like, you're fucking huge, bro. But I didn't get big until like I pretty much like I was in the pros. You know, I was what? I graduated high school. I don't in the two hundreds, but I wasn't stacked. I was six three, so it was just like athletic build. And then in college, I wasn't. You know, I continue to work and work and work, but this is like, and you, you were punting in college. Yeah. What is a, what is a, a punter's practice look like? Same as the rest of the 15 team? 15 minutes. Are, really? are you joking? No, I'm serious. God damn it. Like if you, if you could, because I, I think kicking so, or punting a football, being a golfer or being a closer in baseball, like no offense. It's awesome. Like your job, my son thinks that you're like the coolest guy ever. And yes. I think you're awesome too. What's his name? But you work really hard. Really, yeah. Yeah. really hard, way harder than what people give you credit for, because I kick out maybe 10% of the content, maybe 20% of the content that you do. And I know how much is involved in that. And I also know how much work is involved in being a punter mm. or a golfer or a pitcher. And they make crazy money. And it's 
not a huge requirement. You have to be really, really, <clears throat> your, your mental condition is so much yeah, more yeah, important yeah. than your physical conditioning. I was just, I was a, uh, a gym rat that played football, not like a football player that, cause I dude, when I was in high school, I was a soccer player my whole life. And it wasn't until the football coach came to the soccer field was like, Hey, we need a kicker. Yep. And we got kegs. Like right. Come yeah. down to yeah. the field. And those were the, in high school, like football players. Were, Hell, they, the they, fucking they were cool. shit. Dude. Wait, you're telling me I can be on the team and I get to wear a football jersey? I remember. Jersey yeah, I remember. On Friday. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. girl wants to hook Yeah, of yeah. course. I yeah, thought I was the coolest guy ever. So here I am, the skinniest kid in the school, pretty much. But I'm on the varsity football team kicking field goals and they call me the leg. You know what I mean? Why didn't you? Uh, that's awesome. Why, I, you, why did you kick field goals? Why? Like, when did you make the switch to just be a punter? <laughs> It wasn't until I got in the pros. So gotcha. uh, in high school, I actually received a scholarship because I had six field goals over 50 yards and a 61 yarder. Oh my God. Holy yeah, dude, I had shit. a kid. Bro, wait, isn't that, isn't that, that was like the world record? Isn't that, isn't that like, what's the longest? Uh, it's like what, 68 uh, like, now? Uh, in I think in high school, it's like 70 or something. That crazy. far? Damn. Got wow. the wind kicking Okay, in. so what happened? So I got a lot of scholarships for kicking field goals. Yeah. And so when I got on campus to the University of Illinois, it was the school that was closest to home that was going to let me play football and run track also because I was pretty good at track. What? Did you run the 100? No, I did the, the decathlon. So ultimate. Events, I think yeah. you would be good at it, man. You're a good athlete. Thanks, man. So like Maybe. throwing the javelin, the discus, the shot put, oh, the damn. pole vault, like those weren't events that like just an athlete can step in and be good. Like hurdles. 100, 400, high jump, long jump. You can just be a good athlete and it will come pretty quickly, but there's a lot of technique in discus, javelin, pole vault. Yeah, oh, and then, sure. to, and then to, to finish it off, and, and I'm like way bigger than a normal like pole vault. Yeah. I snapped a couple poles, which is, I was pretty, <laughs> but to finish it all off, the 10th event is 1500 meters. And those, like those track guys that run a decathlon, they're like 155 Spencer. pounds. Spencer's. How much do you weigh? Probably about 163. A, mm, about a buck 55. I'm probably buck 50 right now. Buck 52. Yeah, they're they're about, Spencer, what are you, 5'8", five, 5'9"? Five, 5'10". Five, ten. Five, ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> five, I'm ten. sitting down. We're Give sitting down. Right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody sitting laughing down. over there? We're sitting down. Hey, so, is that so funny? shit. Did Don't you come get, at Spencer. You're all shorter than me, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get shit from the football team, from the football players? Like um, at any point in your career? Oh, yeah, yeah. For like walking on the field for 15 minutes and then like yeah. still getting a Super Bowl trophy. Um, you know what? They like, no, not in the pros because I had earned so much it's street cred. It's important as fuck. Yeah, well, I earned a lot of street you cred in the weight room. You, you know weren't I mean? talking to getting shit from the team. No, I never, uh, no, they never uh, hammered let me, me when let, I was well, on the I want to ask you this. I'm a Birds fan. Okay. And so you probably have a little bit less respect for me now. Been a Birds fan. No, I don't even life. like football. <laughs> You're like, I don't I care now. <laughs> I don't. You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> what the fuck? you didn't punt to Deshaun Jackson, did you? No, that was Matt Dodge. Oh God, thank God, dude. Yeah, that was Matt Dodge. That was, that was the actually most... the reason I went there because he did that. And got, the next and year, got shit canned. They brought me in. To, that was to the job. most important viewing event of my life. The that Miracle at the Meadowlands part two. It was like 21 points in like four minutes. Four minutes to Sean Jackson. All you have to do, your only job in life is do not kick the ball to Deshaun fucking Jackson. And this dude gets out, kicks it all the way down downfield. He fields it at what, like the five or the yeah, 10? Remember, yeah. Runs 90 yards back. I wasn't there. I watched that on Sports Center. That was Thank God. one of the most. Yeah, Dylan remembers that one. Okay, here we go. So it's 31 31. Oh my God. This quality is sick. Punt yeah. it this is to like Deshaun two, Jackson. It's like 228. Oh, and he, he bobbles it. it. Oh, he's going back. Oh, Look at him. Oh, break oh, tackle, oh, juke, 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 oh, break the uh, Jets. And now I'm scre I'm screaming. I'm screaming. My oh my God. Was this in the playoffs? Out. Look, and he almost No, it was like the game. If they would have if he wouldn't have returned that, I think the Giants would have gone to the playoffs, right? Yeah. Well, it would have gone to overtime. Because there's third. Yes. Okay. But yeah. But if they would have won the game, they would have They would have gone to the play. It was the end of the season. Yeah. And they blew 21 points in like the last three and a half minutes. Because it was the it was the Vic Vic Deshaun Jackson connection where they he would just throw 90 yard bombs to Deshaun. Crazy. He was so impressive. How you take what NFL guys do you know? Me? Yeah. Personally? OBJ. I was going to say, I thought I thought you connected with him, dude. That's my guy, man. Really? I love him. Oh, he's dope, bro. He's fucking awesome. Yeah. Tell you a secret. You go out to any club, any night of the week, anywhere in the United States, he'll be there. <laughs> Garen fucking T. <laughs> hey, Just he, stop into any club, anywhere he's in the going fucking to, United uh, States. He's going to Cleveland. Um, <laughs> and Jake and I are from Cleveland. And we're boys with uh, MGK. So we're all going to go uh, for the first game. That'll be cool, and man. That's going to do. That's that's going to breathe some life into that football I, I program. So, bro, I, that'd be we awesome. We were actually talking about that on our way here. And I don't really talk football because I, like, I don't really love it that much. I know yeah. so much about it. But you 
it's just, I, I don't know. I don't find it that interesting anymore, but I do have opinions on, on this situation and that's why it's going to put up some points. The Browns? Yeah. I mean, because you got to think bro. about it. Juice Landry is yeah, probably fifth sure. or sixth for best sure. wide receiver in the game. Odell's one or two. Antonio Brown would be wherever yeah. he's not. Mayfield's on the come up. As long bro. as Baker Mayfield can like, I don't know what his ability is to pass over 30 yards, but if it's decent and they can stretch that defense, man, that running back is good. I mean, he was, this year. he was throwing bombs at Oklahoma. I mean, yeah, you know better. I don't. How'd you take this picture? A lot of points. <laughs> Who took this picture? <laughs> Did you put a GoPro in your mouth? Actually, that was Nico. That was Nico, wasn't it? My camera guy, Nico, did that. And I had to like, uh, okay. so he's standing on my uh, weight bench, right? He's standing on my, and I had to like lean back and then move my neck to this, <laughs> move my neck to the side like this. Uh, he wasn't like draped around your neck? Yes, he was. And then he put the camera, right? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, we had this squat box behind you. He had to hold me from behind. I said, over you like this. Damn, this is cute as fuck. Well. That's 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 dope. We never, we never. <laughs> Wait, that's how that's. <laughs> we never that's do shit like that, dude. But but it, it doesn't work unless you lean back into yeah, Nico, and then he could really light your abs up like you did for is, mine. Is the goal to help people visualize what it what it could be like? I that's what saw, I get out of that. I I'm saw like, somebody damn, else that could do be it on Instagram, like and I thought deal. it looks cool. Yeah. Why did you ever Little beat POV. the shit out of the kicker? Like, what's the difference between a kicker and punter in the kickers locker room? Kickers are usually smaller. Do you ever just beat yeah. them up for no reason? No, I always had kickers that were older than me until actually, I think pretty much my whole career, my kicker was was older would than you, me. No, no wanna, beef, no beef. No, would kickers, you want to beat dude, up a kicker like now? He, I mean, he only practices for fifteen minutes, also. So I've had kickers that I didn't like, but I got along great with them because I had to. Like that dude, they're, they're in your tribe, whether you want them to be or not. The kicker, punter, and snapper spend a lot of time together because we only have one skill. You can't do it all day. What's it? What's it like? running out onto the field. Ah, it's the coolest feeling. Huh. It is the coolest feeling. I miss that. If I say I miss two things, I miss the brotherhood of, I mean, guys from all different religions and races and ages and, you know, so many different stories. No offense. Let me stop you here real quick. When you say brotherhood, because like, again, I, I, I played football, almost, almost went to college for it, but um, when did you have time to bond with the teammates? Just like training camp. Like when you go through things that suck, you end up building a bond with people that go through things that suck with you. Sounds like, and that's why, like basic saying, training. Right. That's why yeah. like I'm Marines saying, and, yeah. and military are like, they're banded for life Forever. because they went through something that just sucked so bad. It doesn't even have to be combat experience. But are you doing the sprints with them? Are you doing the conditioning yeah, yeah. with them? You're, oh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Why? I did all why that did you? Stuff. Why did you do that? Well, Tom Coughlin was old school and he wanted us to, but I had coaches. I played for Jack Del Rio, Sean Payton, um, Herm Edwards, Rex Ryan. Oh, yeah. I've got some good stories from Rex Ryan. Sh- how could you not? The dude. guy who used to drink beers with us <laughs> yeah. in the cold tub afterwards, oh, but he'd be sitting in the hot tub. Like just a total <laughs> Right. He's like the uncle that used to buy you beer, but your mom doesn't want you hanging out yeah. with him. Yeah, but he was my head 100%. coach. Yeah, the 100%. coolest coach, man. And we dude, the years that I was there, we were good. That we were we had some stacked teams. It was uh 2009 and 10. We went to AFC Championship yeah. game two years in a row. Yeah. Mark Sanchez was a quarterback. I mean, I Mark's a great dude, but he's not like a franchise quarterback and he took us to the AFC Championship game two years in a row. He went to the Birds after the Giants yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. He was there for a little bit. Right. Yeah, I think he's still bouncing around. You know, I was going to ask you before, just because it's, uh, it's actionable. And I, people ask the question, how, when did you, uh, when did you get clean and how, how, how long ago was it? Like full on? Yeah. Shoot. Probably, probably about 14 months ago. I mean, I was always high functioning. So like if I ever ate up pain pills, there was about a year and a half of my life where I was eating probably 50 or 60 milligrams of, of, um, of oxy. Yep. Oxycontin. Yep. And, um, and then I got to the point where I actually like f- physically needed them if I had to go do a public appearance or an autograph wow. signing yeah. or like, full on addiction. Even, I was doing, I was doing at my worst, I was doing four eighties a day, dude. Yeah. That, that's see, like, I was functioning. Why you like say, my, yeah. my wife didn't know, like, hell you know yeah, what I mean? Get it. Like it was total, like in the dark, nobody really knew. Um, but even to the point where like, it wasn't like I would get the shakes or anything because I had a system. I would wake up, I would eat a pill. And then around two o'clock, I know I'd need another, More, pill. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I was honest. I, I had it for the most part in control and, and functioning. But if I had to go speak somewhere or like be in a public place, because I, I would always have the anxiety, like, even if it's like third grade kids, like I'm not going to be enough. These kids are like, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, how, dude, that's a sickness, and that, bro. And that, like, like yeah. fuck those kids, bro. To be honest, like you're in third grade. Right, but like, that's like, you. that, that was like where my I'm mind was. I'm just kidding. So what did you, you know? so down, what did, down. so what did it for you? Like, what was the final, how did you get clean? Like, what was your process? Um, I just did it on my own. 
it took about eight days and it was like a movie, man. What? Do you you but, just went to, you went to detox? No, I am at home. It was the last what time was the, I, the last time I had a pill was um, Christmas Eve, 2016. What was the reason for it? Why'd you get, why'd you get clean? Cause my wife was like, really, you know, we came to the point where like there was even the, the periods of eating those pills up. Like I, it didn't make me feel happy anymore. It just made me feel normal. Yep. And so there were no periods of happiness and my wife started to get involved and get really um, concerned with me. And if it wasn't for, for my wife and for my kids, like I probably would have just kept going down that slope and, and you're, who knows. Com- you're completely clean and sober now. So that's, so that's one of the one things I mean, I'll have drinks, but I've never had like an alcohol. So that's where, that's a weird place where I get screwed up sometimes too, because I've like, uh, unintentionally kind of become the face of life after addiction because mine consumed my entire life for 10 years. Like I lived in it for 10 years of oxys and heroin and crack and all that shit. And after being clean for so many years, I've been able to go and have a few drinks now and not go back to the drugs. Slippery slope. I hear it's so slippery, but I also want people to know that I don't advocate it. It's just the, right. the, the situation is as follows. Like everyone has their own path out. Mm-hmm. Mine looks how mine looks, you know, but I do have a lot of really good learnings that I want to start to instill in people that are struggling because they ask a lot, but it is, when are you going to stop? It is. How do, how do you, how do you not advocate well advocating though? If that makes uh, sense. No, I don't. So I don't, I never mean to advocate it. That's why I've tried to. But if you're promoting it. No, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I've tried to roll it back as much as possible. I don't want to advocate it because by the way, like take the addiction out of it and take the slippery slope scenario out of it. Booze is just really fucking bad. For yeah, you. dude, it doesn't. It serve fucks you. up your body. It, 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 it makes you do stupid shit. It puts you in horrible situations and it takes you down from being the per- the best person you can be. When you so, quit. So what, so it's a depressing. at the end of the day, it's just, it's just a shit poison that you put in your body. So let me be the first to say it. But when you I go, stop? I go out and I have, you a, quitting? I, listen, I go out and I have a few drinks with people because just like drugs were, it acts as somewhat of a crutch or mm-hmm. uh, makes me a better life that, or whatever. Though. Of that, course I do. And I just control it and I do it once a week, that. whatever. But the difference with me is I've been able to go out one day a week, never did drugs again. Mm-hmm. And still, I still don't advocate it. But that said, it's interesting to hear like how you just did it completely on your own. You know what I'm saying? Like without well, just, any help. It, I mean, it kind of goes back to like obsession. You know, with- you just read because that's that's the one note I put, by the way, too, is because people ask me how I did it a lot. I say I just redirected the weapon yeah. that was pointed at drugs mm-hmm. towards productive. I think you shit. talked about that. I think you actually said that on the, the podcast with uh, with Charlie. I thought that was good because I, you know, that that obsession, I just shifted it to sub, to, well. to productive shit. Yeah. I've got I, a question. Just, one challenge from Mike. I yeah. just got a challenge. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. Respect. Um, so. With being, you know, we're talking about that slippery slope and you're working on a big project and like, not to, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I know like we're talking yeah. about it. Um, when people see that, that don't have that same self-control as you. Yeah. Like, do you think that you could help people by going completely sober? Yeah. I mean, I think so, but I think it's more important just to make sure that I tell the story. Like, just, just to say like, listen, I never meant to be a role model. Like take what you can from my life and, and take the learnings that I learned and the things that I took out of my, you know, addiction and apply them where you can. But I like to believe that everybody has their own path. And for me, it just hasn't been one of complete and utter absence. I go out for two hours a week, maybe three. I have a few drinks. I come home, I go to sleep. I wake up, I do whatever I'm going to do. So it doesn't affect my life. 99.9% of addicts out there don't have that same ability. And so, yeah, like, would it be good for, for people? Could I, could I better my story more and potentially be more impactful as a servant to others? Yes. Have I grown to a point in my adult life where I feel like doing that right now? No. As of right now, I'm just having fun living my life within a legally, morally and this this next word is going to be tough whatever you, word i'm looking for next things, ethically yeah. ethically semi acceptable way that's it so what was, i what i, I don't challenge yeah to, to, not, to, to go stop sober, drinking to yeah. go 100% sober yeah. what would it take to do 30 days i'm not advocating oh 30 it, days he, i do that all the time we'll do, i'll do 30 days i'll go i'll go on and off you know what i'm saying but i i just 
it's it's just not even a thing. Like, so that said, like, since it's not a thing, then it should be easy to not do it. But yeah, I, I do a lot of networking at clubs. I do right. a lot of meeting people at clubs. I do a lot of stuff. And, you know, I have a few drinks. Right. Do I do I think it's the right thing? Maybe not. Will I address it? Yes. You know, I just. Question for you, because I was, I, I've actually always wondered this with the amount of content that you put out. Do you ever, before you're about to put a, a piece of content out, because I do this, like even now, like before walking in here, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, and it's just, it's just that insecurity of like being enough and being liked. You know, it's, I think it's like a lot of people don't even realize how much they need other people's like acceptance or validation, Hell yeah. et cetera. Do you ever feel like subconscious you're thinking like, how do I need to be in order for people to like me? Like with a, with a, a video or you go to a meeting with somebody that you really admire and you want them to like you, do you ever struggle with like reminding yourself to just be yourself? Yeah. All the time, every day. Uh, I'd say it's, um, I'm very close to shutting that off. Unfortunately though, with the social media shit, like everything I do and my success and my future is, is indeed dictated by people liking me. Mm -hmm. So it's like the key metric. Do you ever get it's, nervous? It's literally the key metric. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Do you ever feel like if you're you're ever like full of yourself, maybe they won't like you? Full of myself? No, like like fully yourself. Like, oh, like you. No, like I got every, lucky, bro. I got lucky because I'm I'm fucking dope. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, like I'm lit. Dude. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> like, and that's what I was <laughs> talking to LJ before on our way up here. I was like, so what's he like off camera? You know, like everybody knows what you're like on camera. Everybody knows what you're like on camera. Everybody knows what you're like. What that what, what that motherfucker say, bro? Pretty what much exactly. Yeah, he said he? like you're like a regular dude. I know. I hate it. Pretty much know? exact I'm, I'm so same thing, dude. Nah, I mean, which like, is encouraging little, me for me to <laughs> invest time up here. You know, nah, building but, a relationship with you guys because, yeah. like, although this has been awesome, like I'm I'm here to 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 share a story, but to build a relationship because, like, that's I want to surround well, you're, myself hey, with well, people you're that lucky. are hungry as you're, I am. You're lucky because. You're also a dope dude. Like you're likable. People are gonna like you and they, and they enjoy your content. Like some people aren't as lucky. I.e. James Charles, bro. Sucks that you suck in real life, and uh, that didn't go well for you. You know, I mean, no, seriously. Like you he's young up. too. We weren't all. I mean, when I was 21 years old, I was a what fucking did James Charles asshole, do? You go to film me. Nah, this was. I mean, it, it, we talked about it in our last episode. This this beauty guru. Um, he, he's a makeup artist. Got involved in some sort of thing where he like promoted his one of his really good, his mentor's uh, competitor product. And he hit on, he's a gay dude. He hit on straight dudes, lost 3 million subscribers in like three days. It's a huge story right it's, now. It's, 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 in, it's, in it's this, huge. In this like, bubble. So everybody's finding out that he's like not authentic. Exactly. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Did like, you struggle with that when people were accusing you of like not being who you really are with, with the whole controversy a couple um, months ago? It was... It, it was actually sort of the opposite. It was the opposite. Everyone thought that the person that was on the vlogs was, was me. Who he really was, yeah. And then when they meet me in real life, they're like, "I don't see, I don't see what the problem is." Like I, I, I had this girl. This girl came over uh, with um, this guy De Niro um, to pitch an app to me, and uh, <laughs> we sat down for ten minutes. And she's like, "I don't, I don't." Let's link and build. She goes, <laughs> she goes, "I don't, I don't see why people don't like you. You're just like a giant kid." And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking, like, I'm not gonna lie. I, I portray a little bit of a douche online. <laughs> but like in, in real life, I'm pretty chill. But that's why the podcast has been super helpful yeah, it's dope. for him because the people are like, yo, and we get to see him sit and be himself for an yeah, hour I'm at a time. Like, yeah. Like I, the YouTube stuff is awesome because it catches my attention, but yeah. then listening to the podcast and hearing depth of opinions yeah. of like real life stuff. Yeah. You know yeah I mean, yeah, like yeah. I get all the silliness, dude. I'm a freaking, you've seen my answer. I'm a savage. I have yeah. five kids. Like I get it in. I'm silly and fun too. <laughs> yeah. um, but to see substance behind like the person that creates the content is, is powerful yeah. because yeah. I know it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I you guys decide that. to get into. It's, it'll be done the right way. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I got a, I got a question about NFL money. Yeah. Cause Google me. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 will. I saw some statistics that like almost 80% of NFL athletes are broke. After, oh, like, never mind. Years. Don't Google me. <laughs> no, 79%, man. Yeah. That's 79. Yeah. After like what? Two years. Uh, after within two years of, he comes with the good questions, man. Um, within two years of retiring or your career being over 79% of 
of NFL athletes are broke or divorced. That's within two months. Crazy. What's dude. what? What's that minimum wage in the NFL? Is it three hundred eight? No, or, that's probably four hundred something. Four hundred thousand. Two fifty. When I was a rookie. And so the majority of year. NFL players are making that kind of money, right? The, the majority. You could probably Google it, but I, I would say the majority of NFL guys, because they have guys that are making thirty million dollars and some guys that are making four hundred and fifty. I would say on average, you're probably looking a at little bit more than that. Probably eight hundred thousand. Okay, on because there's not that many guys making 30. a year. A yeah. year. Okay, that's so. It says here your net worth is two million. Yeah, they're wrong. They're always wrong. The, I don't know where they get those. Hey, metrics. So, well, they were right about me once, and I'm not saying I'm worth more or less than that. It's just like the, all of those are wrong. Yeah. If you ever want to know how much a pro athlete makes in a in a season, type in their name and, and type in spot rack S P O T R A C. I'm not saying that so you can look up mine because it's really not that impressive. I think I made. $15 million over 10 years yep. as a punter with no concussions. And I feel yeah, healthy that's and yeah. going and doing Fucking what I awesome do. job. I keep the football <laughs> smart, like smart stupid business. money. You know, nah, nah, bro, you drop it inside the five. Yard line. See, it's <laughs> nobody fun. drops them inside the five. For me, it's, e it's easy. I don't try to cover anything up. Like people <laughs> ask me, say, yo, my bank account's overdrafted right now. I, I owe $35 to the bank of America. I mm. currently, I, that's why I'm, that's I, a joke. It, it, it Mike might has be a lot of money uh, in the bank. A, a little I, bit, but nope, listen, you hustle. You, you don't do the job I hired you here to do because you do other things. As a godforsaken lie, pull up my scope of work. No. Oh, he said scope of work. Pull no, up my I, I will absolutely pull up my scope fucking work. You don't do anything <laughs> I say and ask you to do. You don't do anything. You're just talent now, bro. Yeah, because that's what happened. I switched. I came on I as a I would say play person. the dog, but he, you control the dog. He's full, <laughs> he's full talent, bro. And it's tough because like, man, man's got talent. I can't hold him back. Like, go achieve your goals. You can do it. I, you said I was 34, so I put all the goals in a bag, bro, and just went to sleep. No, you get knocked out. <laughs> all right, fine. Get out of the bag. All right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? What do you? Uh, did you learn anything in your experience with you know the the compensation from the NFL that you would like to give to all these younger people getting into sports, like to better manage their money or to like oh how can God. they avoid that? I mean, it really like at the end of the day, it really comes down to like our primal need for acceptance. Like think about like cavemen, you know, like cavemen didn't live on their own. They lived in like little villages. We needed to be loved and liked by other people. It's no different than now. Like that's why I do the things that I do on social media and we create the content that, that we create because we want to impact people, but we want to be loved. You know, you know that's we want to the, be um, celebrated. You know, that's it. one of the most primal instincts in, in human, in human, no, in human person well, being. Desire to be loved. Yeah. And be accepted and be heard. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like and, like and, to and the core, no matter who you are. Not, yeah, it, not, and then people that tell you that, like they don't care about other people's opinions of you, they're do they're in denial. Like I, and yeah. it will be important for me to like go back and and read the comments of what people have to say when this airs because it's important to me. I can say that it's not important to me, but it's important. I don't hang on every single comment. That how people do you make. weed? Yeah, how do you weed out like just because there's such a. <clears throat> There's such a culture of like bashing. Well, I don't hang my so I don't hang uh, my identity on the penny uh, on the. Yeah, but how do you decide pinnage? like like, yo, this person said my head looks stupid. Like uh, this person said like, well, it's I mean like, I'm not looking at the comment section to see if I'm loved. Well, I'm also, looking at the, looking at the comment section to see like what I'm stupid? talking about that people no, no, no. enjoy, uh, so I can talk about no, it more. I'm, no you know? one's gonna say your head looks stupid. You got a gray head. Yeah, I think you have a good looking head too. Yeah, I just, the thing is, the thing is that, sh and by the way, do you ever think to the, about this? I brought this up many times in the past. I am so sorry for people who know what I'm about to say here. Do you ever think to yourself, holy shit, wow, how blessed I am to have been born with a head? Because, and I know, 100%. don't jump. Don't, Sometimes you've got to find gratitude in the bro, smallest places. Because think about man. it. And I got in a lot of trouble for this because I kept Maybe not asking a head, people, but I always say arms and legs. Because if I'm like, I don't want to go work yeah, out. But I'm like, dude, I got arms and legs. But is that, I need to use them. I always say that. Always. But what if that was it overused? so much worse. And you just had no, like, what if you were born, dude, and you had arms and legs? The reason why he apologized to, like, before he said it because because he knows it's a stupid fucking question and he's just saying <laughs> words and make, making noises and like it's over, dude. The qu everyone's born with that. If you're not, you're not a person, right? That well, that's another question. Yo, Who makes that man, fucking decision? Uh, has bro? anyone ever been born without a head? I don't think so. I don't think so. Can you got, we get a fact check? You on got this? Laura Lee tattooed on your peck. I noticed, and I'm wondering if is that because you actually liked her apology video? <laughs> <laughs> or what? What's the like? And, and by the way, it went down in history as one of the worst ever. Like, what was this? She faked her tears and, um, 
Oh, you don't. Oh, so you don't know. I analyzed and reanalyzed your video. Which one? Oh, here we go. Which this one? Juicy. The your apology video. Like why? You, Why'd you do that? Because I wanted to see if you were real. You think I'm sorry? Yeah. You know I'm an like, actor. No, it was, you dude. Think- you you can tell, man. You can look in somebody's eyes and see if there's like pain and remorse. You know what I mean? Like Hell real yeah. talk. So talk to me about that video. It was the worst apology video of all time. That's what they say. Yeah. I, and I'm not gonna lie, not to like brag, but my apology video was fucking lit. And you want to know why? Wait, which one? Here's a surprise. I was fucking sorry. <laughs> hey James, take notes. Um, <laughs> not about, the not, flat Earth. Would you ever? Would you ever reach out to somebody that's in a situation like that? Have. Oh yeah. Wait. That's I'm sorry. Cool. Wait. 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 Are you saying someone who has but, to apologize? I, no. Somebody that's made a massive mistake for no other reason but like, hey, I've been there. Um. Yo, you yeah. should tweet at James right now on the show and just be like, bro, I've been there. Just keep your head nah. up. I think that'd be he's classic. He's challenging today, Spencer. Are extremely Do it, well. hates he's him. He's it takes a real man to, to, to he, stand up he, here's why for somebody that's, that's not saying, he just, he just takes a dog. He just did it. It takes a dog. <clears throat> that's the truth. <clears throat> All right, let's go. That, that takes a real man. To send the tweet, Logan. He just did it on the last podcast. I actually had a teammate. He's trying to dodge Not to say it. like he's I'm a real man, but I had a teammate that got in trouble for putting his hands on on a woman and TMZ, and I went on TMZ not to defend him or anybody all of his teammates nobody would comment on it because they didn't want to be involved with the teammate that like beat so and so and i knew it wasn't i knew i was going to get ripped up for doing it but i knew he needed somebody to speak on his like moral fiber and the what? man that he is and i got lit up a little bit for it but like i still feel resolute in my decision to do it really see i i don't i couldn't do that i couldn't get behind that and and, and with james um He's he shat on me in the past. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, what so, if that makes guy had kicked you in the balls really hard? You're walking out of the locker Not, room one day, and he was just like, whoosh, right in your fucking Johnson, bro. Right throat. Would you say like? And would you, you still, you still be still my, my, my instinct would be like, dude, step on his throat. But yeah. in a situation like this, it's like, dude, how how much of a man would you look like? Especially bro, huge. That's what I'm especially, saying, dude. Especially, send especially the tweet, Logan. Over, send it, it, dog. <laughs> Where is it at? That's an alpha move, by the way. What's the, I'm not saying you have an to alpha. do What's move, the tweet, bro? though? It it's like. just like, dude, like, I've been there. It just stay strong. Like, don't yeah. get down don't, on don't yourself. Over, don't overword it and just be like. Yeah. Yeah, but now at this point, bro, I'm doing it for, like, publicity and No, shit. you're not. Like, you're no, doing, doing it because it's the right me. thing to do. No, if I had his so number. So now you're second. If, now, if, you, I had now? His, if I had his number, I'd reach out to him personally and actually give him real-life advice versus being like. Hey, but but no, Twitter, he, look what I'm doing. he came yeah, out but, publicly. But you know though. what you're doing is you <laughs> setting the example. You are creating the story that when you do that, people are going to feel a certain type of way about it. Instead of making a decision on the man that you want to be, you know what I mean? Yep. Like the man that you want to be is a man Fuck. that's going to help people when they then when they really need it. Your girlfriend's versus your girlfriend's cheering cheering at me on public Spencer opinion because idea. I guarantee you, people will gain Send gain respect for you. And I know you want to do it. But you're thinking to yourself, what if people think that I'm doing it just for publicity? Don't let those people stop you from making a big, a bold move. I like, other people I like what's it. going on here. I like what y'all are doing, but I need to re- actually, unfortunately, think on this because like this is not a thing I would be pressured in. Like, uh, no, 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 do it, do it, do it. They tried to get me to stop. The only going reason out. I want to have this conversation. <laughs> it's just a fucking challenge match on your side. What's going on with you it, two? Is to know that. Alpha's when people are at their worst. <laughs> and that's actually how LJ and I became really close friends. Yeah, you got a is, Dude, I'm like 15 years older than him, but he had some troubles that I had those same troubles did, when I was younger. How did younger. you guys get connected, by the his, way? His mom, I guess, kind of like lightweight mentored me um, in media in New York. She's a stallion. Her name's Rosanna Scotto. Oh, and uh, Fox 5, Good Day New York. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, now dude, you know yeah, who LJ I know is. She is. Wait, what? Of course you do. That's his mom? Yeah, his mom's the coolest lady of all time. So anyway, I was dear friends with her because she just really, she, she took care of me every time I had like anything to say, she would have me on her show. It's the biggest morning, morning news show local in America. Like more people watch that than watch good morning America. She's a stallion. So anyway, I ended up reaching out to Rosanna because I heard LJ had gotten into trouble through her. Through her, right? Yeah. Well, it was in the newspaper. Like it was, oh, it was like, big like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, because she's she's a big deal. So I reached out to him, kind of like a similar situation where, like, obviously, it would be a bolder move because 
it will be public and the guys kind of crapped on you in the past. Yeah. However, that's how a relationship with LJ and, and I have started. And like, he knows he can always call me because I was there for him when nobody else was there for him. All of his friends left him. Everybody was crucifying him for being like, you know, the entitled brat that, you know, screwing his life up. But you know, when you have somebody that breathes life and possibility into your life, dude, I guarantee you when that stuff went down, um, that went down in, in your life, you've never been in a darker place. Yeah, you know true. I mean? Yeah. Where do you think that guy's at right now? He feels like his whole life is over. He's kind of right. Because man. his like, whole identity was wrapped up in what, what people's opinions of him. <laughs> no, I mean, like, what's what's good? We still don't have any sponsors for this show. I haven't gotten a brand deal in 1.5 years. I so it's time to get it. Like, oh, it's time it's to over. do the Hold right thing. thing. It's not, not over. over. Everyone it's not stop over, for a second. Just we have a very large fucking brand deal on the fucking table right now, you goose egg son of a bitch. Okay. It blows the gig sponsor! Massive six-figure <laughs> fucking deal. What if they just pulled okay. out because you said the F word 10 times in well, the last then, 10 seconds? then they shouldn't fucking try to sponsor this fucking show then because we say the fucking F word here. Spencer. Yeah, easy, easy. Yeah, All right, but was, still then, you yeah, know what? It's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey. I'm gonna roll it back to freaking no, from hey, now on. This is the new freaking me. Uh, there we go. And by the way, I don't drink either. Starting right now. Hey, can Until we go? Five minutes Old statements now. are there being made go. on this episode there we go. right now. Let's go to the oh. audio only Q and A. Can we do that? Yeah. It's, it's it's an extended version of Steve Weatherford. Thank you, bro, for coming on Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world, bro. I'm sitting in the same seat that your mom sat in, man. I'm God honored to be right. here, Pam. Shout out. I love, I love a Midwest mom. Oh, there the is greatest. nothing, nothing like better. a Midwest the greatest. mom. Nothing better. I take I take advantage of how sweet she is. I'm not gonna lie by saying like not so sweet things sometimes to her just to see how she'll react. Like I just want to see. Like, I 100 percent was watching her face whenever you were going, and you were showing more emotion than what she was because she's. I feel like you're used to it, Pam. Oh. Oh, Pammy Cakes. I, I told, I her, like her, I told her last last episode, I said, don't be a pussy, mom. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I want to see how, if you will react if I talk to you like you're one of my boys. No, because I'm used to it. Please. Yeah, it's always, it, it's always very easy to me. Hey, the hey. ultimate dog, Pam. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, she's true. a hound, bro. Yeah. True. Whoa. She will. You do not want to go at one of her kids. Whoa. She will freaking... <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. We love you. Extended audio Q&A on Spotify and iTunes right now. Take it easy. Peace. Were you religious when, when you were doing drugs? Yeah. I mean, you don't ever like, like you grow up that way and but you like, believe in it. You have faith in it. Like, you know what you're doing is like not God's plan. If that makes sense. So, but I was yeah. bucking the system, man. Bucking my faith, bucking my, bucking my body. You know what I mean? But I was, you were a I bucking was bucking Bronco. Yeah. 